G'day, it's Jamie, and welcome to Where's My Yowie. Today, I'm reading an old newspaper report about a Bunyip sighting on the Barwon River near Walgett, New South Wales, in 1883. So we'll get into it. This was published in Sydney's Sunday Times on Sunday, the 5th of January, 1896, titled Stranger Than Fiction. It was early in March 1883 that my journey across Australia landed me in the township of Walgett on the Namoy. In this place, to pursue my journey down the river, I built a canoe of water bag canvas laced onto a wooden frame. Her length was 15 feet overall, with 2 feet 6 inches amidships, and her weight unloaded was 40 pounds. I carried her down to the Namoy, and after a few trips in her to prove her river going qualities, my pal Mark and I decided to make a voyage as far as Burke in our own vessel. We purchased a tent for camping in at nights, gun, ammunition, provisions and fishing tackle. All being ready, we set sail, or rather, commenced sailing down the river on Easter Sunday March 25th at 8 o'clock in the morning. Our departure was duly noted in the Walgut Mail of the period. I kept a diary of this trip, which was entirely successful and somewhat adventurous, and from it I extract the following perfectly truthful statement of one occurrence, as a yarn of the whole cruise would take up too much of your space. On Monday morning, March 26th, after a most enjoyable day, we camped in a bend on the Uendar Run, then owned by Amos Brothers, opposite a sharp point whence we could see up and down the River Barwon to the first bend each way. Mark went out with a gun while I put out the fishing lines. I was more successful of the two as Mark only returned with a possum, and I succeeded in landing a fish about three pound weight and as sweet as a nut. Having cooked and feasted on these delicacies with the assistance of tea, damper and keen appetites, we lit our pipes and laid ourselves out to thoroughly enjoy a beautiful scene and peaceful evening. The weather being so lovely, to make up bunks, we spread the tent out on the ground and our blankets on top of the tent. And about 8pm, having seen that our gun was loaded, we turned in and were speedily in the arms of Morpheus. About 2 o'clock in the morning, I was awoke by a noise in the river. Like the sound of a boat pulled by a number of oars working in irregular time. It was bright moonlight, and raising my head and looking down the river, I saw, coming round the bend, travelling against the stream, what appeared at first sight to be a long boat propelled by a number of short oars. What on earth could it be in that place, and that hour puzzled me considerably. I woke Mark quietly, and we both watched it for several minutes discussing in whispers the probabilities of what it could mean. Aquatic bushrangers, pirates, thieves, travellers like ourselves, everything was suggested and dismissed. The object, whatever it was, seemed to make very slow progress. But judge our astonishment, and I own it, our terror when, as it came nearer to us, and into the full light of the moon, we discovered that it was a huge animal, apparently about 50 feet long, with a number of sh very short legs or paddles, which it seemed to use for propelling purposes by raising them out of the water and then plunging them in again, very much like sculling. The creature had a very small head for its size, and its body at the thickest part was about eight feet through. On it came, nearer and nearer, making a beeline for our camp. 
and I can tell you our hair fairly stood on end from fear. My collie dog, Bob, was sitting on the bank beside me as if petrified. Our gun was only loaded with duck shot, but I made up my mind to have a plug at the beast if he came much nearer. Our fire was out, so there was no light to attract the monster to our camp. Except for the noise made by the strange intruder, the silence was intensely oppressive. Tales of the Bunyip and other semi fabulous monsters passed through my mind. Bunyip, or whatever it was, it was now coming right under our camp in a most leisurely manner, as if thoroughly enjoying its swim. When it was right under us, and not more than 20 feet from the bank, I took up the gun. But as I, but as I put it at full clock, cock, the click of the hammer sounded loud in the silence and evidently frightened our visitor. For, before I could bring the gun to position, he raised his head and then with a snort like a loud cough, plunged under the water and vanished. You can bet there was no more sleep for us, as although we felt relieved at his disappearance, we were afraid he might return. So we kindled our fire and boiled the billy and kept watch till daylight, but saw our monster no more. I may add, we had no grog in the camp, and we were both teetotalers, and reached our destination, Burke, without any serious mishap. Francis Kent, the end. Well, this is amazing what this thing is. I've never, I have no idea where we begin with what it is. It's like 50 feet long and it has a number of short legs or paddles, had a small head for its size, and um, the thickest part of it was eight feet wide, and it made a snort like a loud cough. Uh, it's just really crazy what it actually is. And I like how that uh, they even actually mentioned that like, we don't drink and there was no grog in the camp. All very interesting stuff. Okay, that's it from me. I'll get back to you all next time. Bye.